This is the word. Let it revelate. Let it open the minds of those who read upon its pages. Lord, we have come to my favorite part of the service, God, where we are able to open up the scripture and break bread. So, God, we ask you to remove all flesh out of your sight. God, all fatigue from yesterday, God, the, the strain of heat and fellowship, God, we ask you to remove and give supernatural strength, God, that I may present this word in the way that you have given me. God, I ask you to open up every heart and mind to be receptive on this morning, that they may gleam and gain something from you on today. God, just like Ruth, God, we ask you to allow us to, to gather in harvest, God, that we may be nourished. And we ask this in your son Jesus' name, all saying, amen. Amen. So, 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 16, and it says, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins to eat to each one. Then all the people departed. Then all the people departed each to his house. And David returned to bless his household. But Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel honored himself today, uncovering himself today before the eyes of his servants, female servants, as one of the vulgar fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. And David said to Michael, It was before the Lord who chose me above your father and above all his house, to appoint me as prince over Israel, the people of the Lord, and I will make merry before him, and I will make myself yet more contemptual above than this, and I will be abased in your eyes, but by the female servants of whom you have spoken, by them I shall be honored, uh, held in honor. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Now, this is an interesting read, amen? Look at your neighbor and say, know the moment. Know the moment. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, know the moment. Amen. This is what the Lord brought me to this morning, Dickie Stokes. Sometimes we don't know the moment. Dickie Connor, sometimes we miss the moment. We focused on all the wrong stuff and we missed the moment. So, I want to talk about that this morning. I'm not going to be before y'all. What time is it? Let me make sure I see that clock. The moment. Do y'all know there's key moments, what they call, Sister Becky, defining moments? What was going on, Deacon Sparks? I got it right this morning. <laughs> Micah, go back to 16. There you go. It says, As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David. Let's just pause right there. This is the moment. Give me your name again. Lakita. Lakita, this is the moment. I got to get you. I got you now, Lakita. You ain't going to hear your name a whole lot from here on out. This is the moment. The ark of the Lord has came into the assembly. The ark has showed up. Do you not know the moment? Can Lisa say, this is the moment? I want to hear y'all say it. This is the moment. This is the moment. Now. This is now. Right now. Look at the and say, right now. right now. So you need to be in the moment. 
I mess with you a little bit. Can I play Tosha? Can I? No, I won't, I won't do it. I won't. I'm married. I got a boost. Well, she should be here a little bit. And there's moments that come up in your marriage, especially early, and you, and you, and you coming together and you in love, but there's moments. And sometimes if you don't say the right thing or do the right thing, the moment is missed. I remember my wife, I used to try to have some a long time with my wife and, hey, let's go out, let's, and she would say something and just mess up the moment. <laughs> or vice versa. <laughs> Tickets don't know that. <laughs> Vice versa, Sister Becky. Sometimes she be in a mood. She want to spend time with her man, and, and she thought we can go out and I come home with the wrong attitude. And she said, you just didn't even know how I was feeling, but you messed it up. And I was like, what you mean? What, what? Now you turned different because you didn't know the moment. Look at your name and say, the moment. <clears throat> did, did that make sense to y'all? There is moments that come into our life that and you got to recognize what moment you're in because the attitude that you have in the moment could, could spell success or, or, or wrap things up to failure. Look at your name and say, you're in the moment. I wanna, sometimes we miss it, man. We're we in the moment and we don't even know it. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David. So the focus is the ark of the Lord, Sister Veronica, has come back to Israel. Now what had happened? They had lost the ark. What does the ark represent? The ark represents the presence of God. He had them to create this so that he can dwell. He hovered over it. Cloud by day, fire by night. They saw the Lord. It, it, it caused houses to be blessed when it went into their place. And the enemy, it caused uh, 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 illness. That's where the Philistines gave it back. They had took it in war. And it was causing illness all with them. And they took it back to the Israelites. But the Israelites didn't put it in its proper place. Another thing, it was their worshiping, it was, it was how they focused, it was about Yahweh and to bring worship and focus to him. So David wanted to bring God back to center stage. Israel had lost their way, they wasn't really focused like they should be, Becky. So David put in his mind, I'm not going to leave the ark where it is, I'm going to bring the ark to the center stage. I'm going to bring it to Jerusalem so that our people can get back to worshiping their Lord to see his presence, to see his radiance, to see his glory, to see his power. This is, look at your neighbor say a moment. Now David went to get the ark. Y'all know the story. But he didn't do it the right way. And there was a, one who lost his life. As he reached out to steady the ark, and it, it caused panic and fear to go across the land. But David heard about how the ark was blessing the house. And he said, let us go get this ark. I got a mission, Sparks. I got you again. Anyway, well, look at that. Two times in a row. Don't make it be three. Sparks, he went to get the ark. And he's... He's understood the right way to do it. Where he messed up, he figured it out. Now he went to get this ark because this ark needs to come into the present. It needs to come into the Mecca, into the city of Jerusalem. He goes and he gets the ark. And he's bringing it into the city. This is a big moment. Look at your name and say, this is a big moment. But Michael, the daughter of Saul, Sister Sanford had the wrong attitude. Mm, just, just messing it all up. David dancing, David excited. We all, in, and then she comes with negativity. Don't, don't you hate, don't you, no, let me stop using H-A-T-E. Don't you just loathe <laughs> people who come in and just rain on your moment. You feeling good, you're high, 
to stoke your feeling good. And Sister Veronica just come in and what happened to me at work today? Sister Veronica, I was feeling good today. Give me two minutes just to feel good. I just, I'm leaving a lot of some big stones look down. <laughs> he looked down to his Bible and the Lord said, right? Micah, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And what should have triggered her to do the same? Her attitude. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to get your attitude in check. Connors, you got to get your attitude. You got to have the right focus. Because you're missing the moment. Woo, church. We've been missing a lot of moments that our attitude, our mindset, whether it's, it's critiquing, whether it's fear, whether it's laziness, whether it's whatever it is, don't miss the moment. Israel was celebrating. Nobody cared that David danced out of his clothes. Nobody cared that David lost his mind. You know why? Because they was too busy losing theirs. Why? Because the moment, Sparks, is, I got it three times. The moment is, the glory of the Lord is coming into the camp. I got it. I, I've been where I was like, I'm going to get this right on Sunday. Me and Sparks was talking yesterday, fourth time, Sparks, I got you. We was talking about the future. We was downstairs just having a good conversation. He didn't know I'm, this is what I, my message was going to be about. So as we was talking about the future and the, we got to have our mind right. It ain't about us. It's about what God is doing. I come in this morning, Deacon Stokes ain't heard me and Sparks' conversation. And what was you talking about? What God is doing. Am I wrong? Hmm. No, I, thought, I didn't think I was. He gave us a synopsis. This is the end. He told this is what we talked about. Sometimes you got to know what God is doing. David is doing something, and this ain't David. This is God. Can I help y'all on this morning? Sometimes you got to look past certain things and see what God is doing. You got to look past yourself, your discomfort your critique, your tiredness, whatever it is, and see what God is doing because you could be missing a moment. Let me go somewhere here today. Amen. The ark represented the power, surrounded the glory, the presence of God. It had eluded them for several, uh, uh, for a season. They was, they, they had lost it, but now with David, after Saul's bad management, after all the stuff King Saul did, David is bringing the ark. He understands the heart of the Lord. He understands what God is trying to do, and David begins to bring God center stage, but Micah, Michael, not Micah, Michael, has her mind on the wrong thing. I got, I got, I got a, a story. Michael, Michael, I apologize. This is Michael. I remember when the Lord told me, uh, Kalisha, he told me, I want you to get up. I was around her and Mike's age. And I didn't have anybody around me in my church that I felt I could connect to that was on my level of thinking how I felt about the Lord. I was hanging around people three, four uh, years my youth. They still in high school, I'm graduating. I just felt, I felt displaced. And he told me, he said, I want you to get up and I want you to go up to the college. Now, I didn't know God was putting me in the moment. Fear, see this is my thing, fear always stops me. 
Fear always causes me to pause, questioning God, you know, discomfort. Sometimes I stay in a discomfort and, and, and to stay in my comfort zone, I miss stuff because I don't want to be uncomfortable. I'm standing before Ken Jones. I'm standing right there at Ryan's back where, well, where is it now? What is that now out there uh, where Ryan's used to be? Go to Corral, where it used to be Ryan's. I'm standing out there and Canton Jones, national recording artist, is standing right there before me. And all I had to do, we just rocked the stage with them. They came to Cape for me and for our group. Veronica, all I had to do was stay and eat breakfast, and I don't know what that moment would have led to. But Sparks, no, I'm messing. <laughs> Stokes, what I did, <laughs> I caught you. Stokes, what I did, I got scared. I let fear put, make me create an excuse not to go sit with Ken Jones. I shook his hand and exited the moment. I don't know what that could have led me to. And I sat at the church. I, I used the church. I, of all things, I've got to get to church. My pastor going to be upset if I'm late for church. I should have went in there and sat out and ate breakfast. But my confidence and my fear caused me to exit the moment. Look at your neighbor and say, don't exit the moment. I want some, I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody in a moment. And they don't need to let fear. Kalisha, don't let fear hit. No, no, uh -uh. Don't let fear get you. Don't exit. Stay right there. So I get to the church and I'm sitting there and it hit me hard, Becky. Why did you do that? And I I got that regret about it too. I be thinking, why didn't I go in there and sit with that man and eat breakfast? Why did I? Because I let fear pull me out the moment. My attitude was fear, and I feared it, and I let it escape me. I got another one. I got an opportunity to go take a class with a good friend of mine, Pastor uh, William Bird Jr. We called him Tiger. He said, Ralph. That's what they call me. Everybody don't call me Pastor Moe Stafford. And call me Ralph. Ralph, I got, Brother Ralph, I got to talk to you. I'm like, all right, what's up, Sister Ann? Now, he said, I, I got this class, man. We should have had these Bible classes, man. And I, Becky, my first mind went to comfort. I don't want to have to sacrifice time to go to these classes. And I was going to say, no. And the Lord said, go. As soon as I was about to open my mouth, I said, no, no, I'm good. Some said, go. I didn't recognize the moment yet. I don't know what I'm about to get into. So Stokes, I go to the class. I run into some individuals in this class. Now, my first engagement with these individuals wasn't a good one. But I run into these two individuals, John and Cliff, John Vernon and Cliff. And I'm sitting there and we're going through these Bible class studies and all these different things. And then, Sister Ann, out of nowhere, I began to see God and put me in a moment. These are going to be lifelong partners that's going to help you get farther down the road. But if I would have said no to stay in my comfort zone, I would have missed the moment. I want to tell you something. Some of y'all are missing the moment because you have the wrong attitude when the moment presents itself. Michael's attitude was disdaining for David instead of looking at the fact that the presence of God was coming back into her, uh, uh, to the city. She should have been joy and, uh, and, and excited and happy, but no, she chose to focus on David getting a little too excited with his dancing. And she began to criticize David instead of losing herself in the, look at your name, say mom. The ark, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw David leaping and dancing, and she despised him in her heart. She, she had contentment for him, disdain for him. She was shamed instead of being happy. 
Connors, instead of getting overjoyed, David understood the moment. Some of us, that's why we can't celebrate. Bro, we don't know the moment. But I'm telling you somebody, I don't know who I'm talking to. The Lord said, I'm pulling you into a moment. And your attitude is going to determine whether you get on the other side of the door or stay on the outside. I'm bringing you to it. What you going to do when I get you there? It's a saying, I can take the, the harsh to, but I can't make a what? I can't make them drink. But I can take them to the lake all day. The Lord said, I've been taking you to the lake quite often, but you never drink. You find a reason. You find that needle in the haystack to, to, to disgage and disconnect and not... You missing the moment. Because you don't know who there that you need to talk to that may have what you need for what you're trying to do. But because you don't want to go there, you miss the person, the moment, the opportunity, the chance. Why? Because you was too lazy. You was too critical. You, look at that and say, it ain't about you. Amen. You want to know who else missed the moment? Israel missed the moment. And they come up to the promised land. They looking at it. They got to go out there and investigate. They brought back grapes and fruit and that was so big that they took two, three people to carry it back over. But the fear of the Canaanite, the fear of the inhabitants caused them to forfeit the moment. But Caleb and Joshua said, no, 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 no. We want that. Y'all heard of Jehoiakim, right? King. Y'all heard of him when, when Elijah told him to go get some arrows. Is that right? Is it, is it King Jehoiakim? Let me make sure I got his name right. I want, I want y'all to know who I'm talking about. Amen. But Eli, Elijah told him, I want you to go get some arrows. I might not have the, the king right, but he said, and I want you, every time you st strike the ground, Becky, God is going to give you victory. And the king took the arrows, and he casually struck the ground three times because he didn't understand the moment he was in. And Elijah said, he got mad with him, really the Lord got mad with him, but Elijah said, if you would have struck the ground six to seven times, you would have had complete victory. But because you have heartily engaged my, uh, my words, now you won't get full victory over your enemy. Why? Because he didn't recognize the moment. Some of y'all are in a pivotal 
defining moment of life, a key place in life, and your decision, Mike, your decisions, Micah, your decisions is going to determine how far you get. Look at this. I want all of it. Amen. I want all of it. Let's go back to the word. It says, and go to verse 2. And it says, and David, I mean 18, it says, and when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, and, and he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. So David is, is bringing the people's focus back. Then you get down here where he returns to bless whose household? Look at verse 20. Put 20 up there, Michael, real quick. It says, now David comes to bless his house. Micah, Michael is about to be blessed, but she's too focused on her disdain for what David did in his celebration to realize you finna forfeit a blessing. It's right there at your fingertips. All you got to do is let David finish what he's doing and your house will be blessed. But she opened her mouth and uttered complaint. Not praise. Not adoration. Mike, she didn't get up and begin to dance. David, I'm excited. Oh my God, the Ark of the Covenant is back in Israel. The Ark of the Covenant is back with Jerusalem. No, she opened up her eyes and said, oh, you was out there dancing and all being all wild and loose and the women saw you. Sometimes that's us. We in a good moment, in a good space, and we find a thing to complain about. God is doing something in your life and you find the one thing to, to hold on to justify staying in your comfort zone. I don't want to get out to bed. I don't want to make that sack. I, yeah, I worked eight hours. I don't want to go over there and meet with them and you don't even know your next stage in life is at that meeting. The person that's going to pivot you to where you want to go is at that meeting. And if you don't go, you're going to miss the moment. That's why it's on you so hard. Don't turn it down. Go. Why? Because there's somebody there that you need to talk to. <clears throat> the Lord says somebody is in a place where you better not let fear cause you to miss it. Becky, don't let comfort cause you to miss it. I talked about this. I wish you was here a few weeks ago, Sister Becky. We talked about uh, sometimes we want to go back to the thing we know we ain't enjoying rather than try something that may, we might not know where it's going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we stay in the thing. We, we know how to predict this. We know what this is going to get me, but I don't know what this is going to get me, so I stay in what I can predict. But sometimes it's good to just disrupt your life disrupt some stuff and in the disruption God come in and bring order out of chaos step out on faith and watch the Lord move and guide your footstep and take you to a place that gives you the peace that you want and the, and the financial stability that you want and the free time to move and operate like you want Becky don't miss the moment who am I talking to in here Mike am I talking to you You've been going up to St. Louis a lot. I need to know if you are you are you handling this moment right. <laughs> and <clears throat> I want to focus on what David said. So it says, and David returned to bless his household. But Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. She didn't even wait and said, "How the king of Israel honored himself today." He she being sarcastic uncovered himself the day before the eyes of his servants and then she, she zeroes in on what her real complaint was the female servants as one of the vulgar fellows shamelessly uncovers himself what was going on with Mike, Michael is the fact that she was very hurt as a woman you gotta know her story she was supposed to be David's wife from the beginning but her father gave her away and some political stuff and gave her to a whole nother person. 
So she spent a large time with a whole other person, a whole other king, and then after the situation, she was taken from him and brought back to David. She was treated like property. She's hurt. She's, she, so it's a lot of pain in this. And then her father dies. Her brothers die. She sees her whole household wiped out. So there's a lot wrapped up in her words to David. But she still got to Deacon Stokes, she still got to keep her mind with the right attitude for the moment that she's in. I know we have it hard. I know there's times when we're frustrated. I know there's times that we're mad. But when God brings us in the moment, that ain't the right time to keep it. That's the wrong time to get in yourself. Y'all seen the movies where they, they go to a place and they got that one relative that they know don't know how to act right? Y'all just think of the movie, you know if you bring this person, I don't care where he is, we could be at the mall, we could be at the doctor's office, we could be sitting here talking with a millionaire at the bank, you say the wrong thing, they gonna act in a way that's gonna mess everything up, but you just saying, please, not right now, don't, don't say that right now, don't act like that right now, sit, just sit down, don't, don't, don't get in yourself, cause you know, as soon as they get to going, it's over. Some of us, we need to step out of ourselves. Amen. Michael, put up 21, and we're going to get out of here. I'm done. And I want you to see what David said. And David said to Michael, it was, I want y'all to say the next line. Say it. Let me hear you say it. It was before the Lord. You was never the focus. I was never the focus. See, you see, you focusing on me. Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me above your father. See, you getting all in your feelings because of your house. I didn't cause that to happen to your house. And all uh, above all his house to appoint me as prince over Israel, the people of the Lord. Who's the focus? It's all his. See, Michael missed it. Michael missed it because she lost the, the, the focus that is his, it's God's. Not David. God orchestrated this. God wanted the ark back in, his, in Jerusalem. God wanted the ark before his people so that they can worship him, so that his presence could be ever before them. And she missed that focusing on David. And I will make Mary before the Lord. I'm not going to let your words cause me to not praise him. I'm not going to let your words cause me to not continue to pursue him. I'm not going to let your words stop me. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't stopping me with your attitude. Go to the next one, Mike, when we're done. We've got two more. I will make myself yet more contemptible. I'm going to be even more indignant. <laughs> then this, I will be abased in your eyes. Oh, you, you don't like me right now, but I'm finna go worse. Becky, they don't like your smile and your shout right now. Wait till they see you stand up and wave your hands and torture you. They think you, you, you too much right now. Wait, wait, wait. Look at them and say, wait. I'm gonna be abased in your eyes. I'm a, ooh, you, you upset at how I danced out of my, my, my outfit, how, how they saw me lift up my hands. Sparks, I'm finna get worse than this. You ain't say, look at this, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, yeah, you, Felicia, they ain't seen nothing yet. Sparks, Stokes, they ain't seen nothing yet. I shall be honored in all these people. Ah, why? Because my focus is on the Lord. Go to the last one. And I want to show you this. And it's a reason why this is in the account. And it says, and Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Why is it there? Just like when the Bible said that Israel and to all those who complained was wiped out. That means she had no heir. She had no one to carry her name. And that was it. She missed the moment. When David was coming to bless her house, she complained. And she missed her moment. That's, that's saying you missed the moment because 
She, he was coming to his house. She was a part of his house. Had he said what he needed to say, Michael would have been blessed. But she opened her mouth in the moment, and she had no children with David. This is her story. This is how she remembered complaining when the presence of God was coming back into the city. Look at your name and say, shut your mouth. Say it, hush. Stop complaining so much. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I hear the Lord saying, you right there. You right there. Kalisha, you right there. I, I, I can tell you right there. I don't even know. You might have already crossed over. I don't even know. You might be in the promise. Now, you, you might have a testimony I need to hear. But the Lord said you in the moment. You in that transition spot where you finna be positioned for your future and it's gonna yield results and happiness and joy. But don't, don't mess it up by fretting. Don't mess it up by getting fearful. Don't mess it up because of the discomfort. Because sometimes that moment comes with discomfort. When David was standing before Goliath, he had to go out there and contend with Goliath, but it was a moment. Look at your name and say it was a moment. It was going to define David for the rest of his life because when he came up the hill and he heard Goliath, he was bold enough to see the moment, look it in the eye, and deal with it. And he didn't have to deal with it too long because once he had the strength to go out, God took over from there. Some of us is on the cusp of a transition. Stokes, you right there. You in the moment. You've been patient. You've been peaceful. You've been biting your tongue. You've been dealing. But the Lord said just, just a little while longer in this transition time. Look at they say transition time. God said David is coming to your house to bless you. And when you're talking about David, you're really talking about Jesus. Stokes, he's about to show up at your situation. Okay, I'm coming to bless. He, he been doing right. He been, he been faithful. And he's going to show up and knock on your door. And the blessing going to be there. And, and if you have the right attitude, Torsha, the right attitude. See, I, I should have went and ate that bacon and them pancakes and them sausages. But I got up in fear and ran to the place called there, the house of prayer. Yeah, I did. I ran. I was in that Grand Prix with the hubcaps, missing an opportunity. Put your hands together in this house. Amen.